show that if matrix product of A and B is zero, then either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero or both A and B are singular matrices. We don't have any other cases. If A and B is equal to zero, then since the product is equal to zero matrix, we can take the determinant of both sides. The determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of zero matrix. Remember the properties of the determinant. The determinant of A times B can be written as the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And on the right-hand side, the determinant of zero matrix is zero. So since the multiplication of two numbers is zero, it means that the first number is zero or the second number is equal to zero. These numbers are the determinant of A and B. So you can basically say that either A is a singular matrix since the determinant is zero, or B is a singular matrix since the determinant of B is zero. Now assume A is non-singular. If A is non-singular, the inverse of A exists. So basically, you have the following case. A times B is equal to zero. You can multiply both sides by the inverse of A. Inverse of A times AB becomes inverse of A times zero matrix. You can group these together. A inverse times A is always equals to identity matrix. And then you get matrix B equals to zero matrix. So again, if A is non-singular, it means that if you assume B is singular and A is non-singular, you end up with B equals to zero matrix. Similarly, if B is non-singular, it means that if you assume that the determinant of A is equal to zero, not the determinant of B, then it can be shown that A is going to be zero matrix. So when A is a non-singular matrix, then B is zero matrix. And similarly, when B is non-singular matrix, then A is a zero matrix. So if A is singular and non-zero, then B is also singular. Otherwise, A must be equal to zero. So if A and B is equal to zero, then either A is zero, B is zero, or both A and B must be singular matrices. There is no other way. So if you have a statement that say that, hey, A times B is equal to zero and A and B are both non-zero matrices, it means that both of them must be singular matrices.